Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you a story this afternoon that comes from my homeland, which is Wales. But I'll be more specific. <coughs> North Wales, not South Wales. <coughs> I was brought up and went to school in the seaside resort of Llandidno. So that's my area, the coast there and the Conway Valley, because I could see the Clanton was actually situated on the estuary of the River Conway. And from my bedroom window I could see the, the ranges of Snowdonia. And uh, I don't know whether you knew, but there are maybe seven or eight peaks in Snowdonia, all over uh, 3,000 feet. And at school, uh, it was a co-educational school, so the girls and boys came in from down the Conway Valley and from little towns to John Bryce, which is where I went to John Bryce Grammar School in Llandidno. And I knew that they lived in places on the slopes of Sidonia, and they probably lived in a house where the road was like that steep. And this is a story about a young lady called uh, Mega, and she lived in that kind of location uh, on a very steep part of the terrain. And I call the story uh, Beyond the Mountains. Mega was fed up, fed up with living halfway down a precipice in Wales. She longed to escape beyond the mountains to a place it was flat, flat as a pancake, somewhere like Lincolnshire. But she was, she was fed up of losing boyfriends who fell by the wayside whenever they offered to walk her home. Sometimes it was altitude sickness, but more often than not, it was mental delirium, brought about by listening to her father talking rubbish on the vast range of subjects he kept farther away in his head under the category of misinformation. So there was Mecca, waving goodbye to another boyfriend who was rolling away down this road that was like a switchback and on to the next Welsh mountain village. But then miraculously, the road where she, came, where she lived became trendy and all because of a stupid bird called a lesser spotted fantailed warbler that landed accidentally one night in Mrs. Parry's crooked sycamore tree. Within hours, the place was full of twitches. Now twitches are a kind of lunatic. <laughs> when they see a species of bird they haven't seen before, they write its name down in a book. It travelled the earth, travelled around the world looking, you know, adding to their collection. Uh, very soon, the road outside Megan's house was full of wild-looking men, all hoping to get a glimpse of this lesser spotted fancy whatnot. There were scores of cars clinging frantically to every available curbstone. You see, in that part of Wales, the, f the forces of gravity are more powerful than anywhere else on Earth. Very soon every one of the cars was sliding downwards, followed by its owner. The air was black with cascading binoculars and tumbling tripods. <laughs> Immediately, her dad, her father, put a notice in the window offering his services as a stress counsellor. <laughs> <laughs> up to now, up to now, no, no fresh sightings of this lesser spotted fancy and whatnot, but twitchers are very patient people and they all waited around, pencils poised. Now, to Megan, it seemed like a great opportunity to get the hell out of a precarious situation, living like a bat on the side of a cliff. <laughs> no. But, <coughs> so, when Eric knocked on the door of the house, asking if her father was available, to relieve the stress and tension he was suffering from. She quickly dragged him in. She could tell at once, judging by his collection of telescopes and digital cameras, Eric was not short of a bobber too. 
<laughs> best of all, best of all, he lived in Lincolnshire. <laughs> now, as soon as a father had finished his consultation with the words, 25 pounds, please, Megan entered the room announcing that heavy rain was forecast and a sharp drop in temperature. She suggested that Eric might like to spend the night in one of the nice, warm, cosy beds, and he agreed. At half past nine, she made Eric a nice cup of cocoa and proposed that he might like to retire early and rise at dawn and maybe catch a glimpse of this lesser spotted fan tail, what not. Later on, she crept across the landing in a nightie. Hearing her father snoring heavily, she tapped on the visitor's room. Thinking of the prospect of walking about on the level plains of Lincolnshire in a vertical position <laughs> sent her passion soaring. <laughs> there was no response to a tap on the door. So she entered the room. The bedsheets were drawn back. Eric was gone. But perhaps, perhaps, there'd been a sighting of this rare bird and Eric was already crouching under Mrs. Paddy's crooked sycamore tree. She opened the front door of the house and spread her nightdress against the moonlight. <laughs> well, you never know your luck, do you? <laughs> she was confronted by a frenzy scene. Everywhere the switches were packing up. She ran to where Eric had left his car. When he saw her coming, he quickly jumped into his vehicle and switched on the engine. Boom, 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 boom. What's the matter? Megan shouted. Ah, haven't you heard? Eric yelled back. It was on radio. They've spotted a spoon-billed, red-legged sandpiper in the Aberdeen, so I'm going. Cheerio. So once again, Megan was left. Never to travel beyond the mountains and to know the joy of walking about in a perpendicular position. <laughs> <laughs>